Hi, I'm Dr. Paula Witkowski, and I'm the director of the master's degree in reading and the graduate certificate in dyslexia. I'm going to briefly tell you about a test I've used for many, many years. It's been around since the 1970s and is now in its third edition. It's called the Lindemood Auditory Conceptualization Test. So what does that mean? It's an individualized test that's for all ages, kindergarten through adult, and it measures auditory perception and conceptualization of speech sounds. So to define some terms, auditory discrimination is the ability to hear the difference between sounds. So the difference between s and p and b and o. Auditory perception is to hear how many sounds are made, whether they're the same or different, and the order or sequence that they come in. Auditory conceptualization is the ability to use a visual modality in order to show what sounds you're hearing. And in this case, in this test, we're using colored blocks to show the sounds, not letters. How would this test help you as a teacher? It helps predict reading and spelling performance. I've found that kids who do not have a problem in this area breeze through the test and think it's fun. They'll say, I want to do that again. But kids that do have a problem say, I want to get out of here. They don't know how to do it. It's very difficult. So it really identifies some of the problems very early in why they are having trouble reading words and then spelling words. The test, um, I'm just going to show you a little bit of the test, the part that deals with phonemes. The newest edition has added on to that and looks at being able to sequence syllables and sequence sounds and, and syllables together. But we're just going to look at the first major categories of this test. Um, remember, phonemes are the sounds of our language. So when I am giving this test and I'm saying the phonemes, I have to be careful to say them correctly. I can't say sa, I can't say la. That's putting an uh sound with the phoneme. I have to say s, o, g, b, as, and keep that uh sound out of it. Um, when the, I begin the test, the first thing I would normally do is a little pre-check looks to see if the student understands colors, like in these blocks, that they can identify different colors. If they know the terminology for same and different, first and last, and they can follow directions. If they have trouble with any of that, they're not ready for this test, and I can't give it. So, first category, it's going to look at isolated sounds in sequence. Let me give you some examples here. Stephanie is again going to be my model. <laughs> so I have gone through the pre-check. I've given uh, examples of what we're going to do. And I give her the direction to say, now it's your turn. Listen carefully, because I can say each pattern of sounds only once. She's then going to use these blocks to show me what she hears, whether the sounds are the same or different, and what order they're in. So. Stephanie, show me s, s. Very good. She heard two sounds that were the same, and so she shows me two blocks of the same color. Now we put them back. Show me g, b, v. Good job. Show me I, E. I. E. E. Very good. I, E. And it doesn't matter what color she chooses as long as she shows me that she heard two different sounds. And so she used two, uses two different color blocks. As we move on through the test, I'm going to do more, a longer sequence of sounds. So show me t, t, ch. Right, three sounds, two the same, t, t, and then the ch 
sound. And even though that's made with two letters, it's just one sound. And Stephanie knew that. Let's try one more. Show me n o n. Exactly. Very good. She did it. Now there's more of those. Altogether, there's 16 of those patterns that she's going to show me. If she had trouble in either of those, any of those tasks, it would indicate that a more than usual difficulty in acquiring letter sound association, especially if she's just in the first grade. If she's in second grade, any errors after second grade indicate a severe amount of dysfunction. So usually when I'm given this test, most of the kids don't really have too much of a problem there. But if they do, then I know it's something that we need to look into. The next part of the test, category two, is the one that really identifies problems here. I'm going to have her show me sounds within a syllable pattern. The patterns in this category measure most of the consonant vowel contrasts that are possible in simple syllables. The complex syllable patterns check interior differences with a minimal memory burden. So each test item requires the manipulation of one phoneme change. Changes include addition, substitution, omission, shift, and repetition. Nonsense syllables are used to eliminate responses that would be relying on spelling. So, once again, I give her a demonstration, and then I say, all right, now it's your turn. Listen carefully, because I can say each pattern of sounds one time. So, show me I. I. Very good. See, that's one sound, one block. If that says I, show me ip. Good job. If that says ip, show me pi. 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 Now, in that case, she would have made a mistake because she had ip with the yellow one showing a p sound. There's, when I say p, there's still only two sounds, and so I shift the yellow one to the front. And she wouldn't have made that mistake if I had done my demonstration. <laughs> if that says pi, show me pip. pip. And we'll do one more just as a demonstration. If that says pip, show me pop. Very good. So and any errors in this part of the test after second grade would indicate that the processing of speech sound relationships is very unstable and needs to be addressed immediately. I have found this to be one of the most reliable tests that I give to students who are struggling in reading. <laughs>